Uh, hi everyone, we are back with another session and this session is about um, basically about preventing the anonymity when somebody is giving tip offs and uh, basically, um, I mean, to be much precise, tip offs. And uh, we are more into, uh, I mean, uh, you can think about the ways you can implement the entire system. I'll give you an idea and uh, maybe some diagrams explain it uh, and let you know how can we how can it be done and what all thought process could be involved. Like how we did before, we are also going to talk about the business behind this, the logic behind this, what anonymity is, what tip offs are, and uh, why are they essential and crucial, and why is the identity of somebody who is giving a tip off for any particular thing important you can link this directly with fraud detections and uh, you can uh, also link it with uh, somebody who wants to provide some information also we have to identify whether the information given by the other person is true or is not a hoax call so all of this thing has to be identified along with since we have to also do we have to uh so there are two things the first is we if we want the person to be anonymous then we have to prevent the frauds as well the frauds would be such that um somebody is giving a hoax call because they know that the identity is not being captured and when your identity is not being captured you will keep on doing a hoax call so we have to even prevent that there's a trade-off so when you are thinking about being anonymous, we are at the same time thinking about not getting calls which are unimportant and which are not giving relevant information for whatever is required. Before, let's look into what anonymity is, why it is vital and why it is, or whether it's vital, it's unnecessary, and why it is vital, when, why it is unnecessary. Where cases it is unnecessary, and uh, then we have to come up with a strategy of combining the positives and negatives and discussions about this together to build up a system where we have to identify tip offs, anonymous tip offs, and uh, maintain the anonymity and also um, with less frequent frauds. So, there are uh, when we talk about uh, what is anonymity, there are two kinds of anonymities online and two kinds of and offline also. So one where anonymous servers will strip the origin of the message away, making the sender completely unreachable. Then there are anonymous services which give their consumers an anonymous identity which make them anonymous but reachable. So there are two things which can happen. In one case, we do not store any information and they are completely anonymous, completely unreachable. We cannot trace back to them. In another case, uh, these are anonymous service providers. So services is provided by some companies or individuals where to a department who is the end user of that anonymous information, to them, the consumers are not reachable. The identity is anonymous, but uh, they are reachable. They can be reachable. For example, if I give you is, uh, let's say you are a company or you are an organization and in your organization, you have a service of maybe telecallers and these telecallers are um, for, they receive calls and then they forward the information to the relevant department with the grievances, with whatever the information has passed through. So what it is, is that calling caller who, a telecaller who is, who gets the first information to them, the, the, the person is reachable, but in the next step, next level, the person is not reachable. Anonymous 
and internet began in 1988 and were used to post news that was sensitive or personal. Most anonymity sites got closed down in the following six months due to the rise of online attacks and fake internets. As we said, when we think about something being anonymous, there are attacks, there are hateful comments because people are more, uh, I mean, anonymous people are, if the, everything is anonymous, people, uh, just a minute. Okay. There are certain arguments which are there in general, the society we live in, where it is dangerous to make certain statements, discuss sensitive topics, or even tell certain truths, such as police station, if we have to go and let them provide them an information about people's tip off, give them tips or give them hints about about somebody and uh, we need to identify and uh, we have to uh, maintain certain kind of anonymous anonymity in the users or in the people in order for the people to give tip offs for example if uh, for example if we are uh, for example if we are uh, We have an information about certain hawks, certain, we have an uh, information about certain tragedy to be happening at a certain place and we need to give it to a policeman. Then we have to uh, register our statements to police. And when we have to register our statements in the police department, we would want us to be anonymous. And when we want us to be anonymous, to hide our identity, we can do that. Offline, yes, we can do that. Online, we will have to think about how can we achieve that. When any anonymous server went down, a man sent them 
a man sent them and they wanted to require about the services And they want a service. They believe what, I mean, they want to consider somebody as anonymous. And uh, they have been posting some contents and they have been sending some contents to an email ID, which is actually say, stating that this is this would be an anonymous comment. Um, but uh, again, when we do this, we the identity is known to somebody, we can trace back. But what if we do not want to trace back and yet uh, avoid frauds. That's where we have to focus on. Everybody believes that anonymity is the vital to freedom of expression. It says that when you do not bring somebody into highlight, when you have to bring good about, then uh, it actually allows people to start processing it and see how people react and so on when they are anonymous. When they are anonymous, that's when they uh, express their freedom correctly. And when freedom of expression is there, it's then the real truth comes out. At the basic argument is that the fact that we cannot avoid it, people will send letters without signing them or making anonymous phone calls. We should embrace it. People will do, people will do phone calls which without signing, without letting the other people know who they are. And there are certain arguments you will find that extreme abuse and illegal activities occurs. It's a very, very big drawback of being anonymized. When you have an anonymity, for any uh, so anonymity is basically understood we are just protecting somebody's identity we have de-anonymized so that the person cannot be reached the person becomes not reachable so extreme abuse and illegal activity is one of the most drawbacks obvious drawbacks of somebody being non and now anywhere where there's an anonymity once anonymity is specialized, I and mean, it is believed that people are more likely to believe things in print as opposed to a phone call, and so hateful and abusive comments can become dangerous. When you give a phone call, also when you write it down on internet anywhere, people are more likely to build on anon uh, uh, believe on anonymous comments more. So if there's a hoax call or if there's a hoax, uh, fake news or fake uh, things being uh, done or circulated, then people are more likely to um, believe on them. And once they believe, then there would be hateful and abusive comments coming up. It is close to impossible for the authorities to track down people doing or discussing illegal activities, which can put society into harm. So if you become completely anonymous, then it is very difficult to track down people and this, who are discussing illegal activities and who are putting such a harm to the society. And then there are people who say that they do not like being anonymous. They, they don't believe in being anonymous because they feel that nobody needs a shield. But these are all comments which people, individual people have their own, right? If you have to close down a system because few people will speed it, then this is not what we have to do. For example, if you have root ways, hate comments coming up and people are targeting your servers, systems everywhere, then your system will speed down and you have to close it. So when we have to do something anonymous, when we want people to protect their identity and also we want the information to be shared by the media, by any form of media, then we will have to come up with a robust technology or robust idea 
which will cater to all these drawbacks and pros of being anonymous. As I said, when you understand the true nature of business, only then you can come up with something, some ideas, some technologies. So what business is saying that, okay, we want anonymity because we want the freedom of speech. When we want freedom of speech, we want to protect somebody's identity. Only then we might be able, only then somebody will report the correct thing. Only then somebody will report the correct thing. And when the correct thing is being reported, it's uh, it's then the necessary actions can be taken. So, so um, it's a system to be built in. Do not uh, see to it that uh, I have to come up with some algorithm to do this. No. The idea has to be where well, a system has to be built. And here the system would be, I, I'll draw one of the uh, one of the idea solutions which I can come up with to uh, let you all know what a system can be. And also, uh, this is not the only system, but you can go through in that direction. For example, I'll, I'll just uh, put up that diagram for you and explain it to you how systems can, how, uh, what, what can be done to protect the identity and as well as prevent the frauds. Yes, so we have to come up with a solution of fraud detection. Here we can do fraud detection thing. And uh, with fraud detection thing, you can uh, first at an individual level is where you will detect a fraud on a call. If it's a calling uh, to a police department, we will have to detect um, for fraud detection. So you will have a technique where you will detect a fraud and if fraud has been occurred, then you will not uh, move ahead. I mean, the call is a hoax call. You will not move ahead and identifying a hoax call is again a fraud detection technique where you will have to identify voice. Uh, you'll have to identify a um, lot of things, I mean, just not a lot of things. You'll have to identify fraudster. So we have to identify frauds. Once we identify frauds, then we can move in the uh, direct direction of whether uh, then we can have a human intervention to ident identify a uh, lot of things. I mean, for example, there can be fraud, there can be theft, there can be uh, some, um, let's say, attacks happened in the society and somebody is reporting the attack, right? So when somebody is reporting the attack, uh, the system uh, the system will uh, talk about, I mean, this, you have to build up, create a system which will uh, prevent those attacks. And as I said, there would be layer after layer after layer. I'll just draw it for you. Up on the screen. I'm animating payment building up system on the screen. 
So there's one thing you can do is at first you can have a fraud detection. Okay, we call it as fraud detection system. We can we can use this pencil. So we can have like fraud detection. After the fraud detection thing, the next is next box you can have is of if there would be yes and there would be no. There would be two things coming up from a fraud detection. And first thing would be yes and no so we have first would be fraud detection where did it go it just went away just wiped it out right so we talk about things like fraud detection block once we have a fraud detection block the next is we can have a next block it can be yes and it can be no so one block is for yes and Another, am I getting this line? Let me put it there. Next would be this thing away, it's wiping away. I'm just putting up the blocks first. So I have a fraud detection block, and I'll have two blocks here one for yes, and another one for no. If it is yes, then we will have to. Uh, give it to an individual who will identify whether it is actually a, a fraud or not and if it is a fraud then the call will be rejected and the person's identity can be recorded the next is the anonymous message if the system says it is not fraud then we particularly go to the cell which is our organization or a cell which is responsible for uh, listing down the anonymous comment and we just list out in the comment and do not keep the identity of the user so what we can do this is one yes and this is for no and then we can do this Right. So, as I said, first we'll have to go with fraud detection. Fraud detection would be on text, would be on calls, would be on a uh, lot of lot of things, lot of parameters. Right. It's not only. Uh, uh, it's just like the again. No, it should not happen. But I. Yes. So I got got it back this this uh, is tricking me now okay so the next is after fraud detection if i said we have yes the about thing is uh, that the fraud is occurring so somebody is giving a hoax call and the below line would be if somebody is not giving a hoax call and if somebody is giving a hoax call or hoax information or a false for just trying to, um, you know, hey, just, just, just being, um, being a fraudster, then there would be, it, it will be diverted to fraud team or a system which will actually detect, actually confirm the fraud 
So fraud team confirmation will happen here. After fraud team confirmation has happened here, the system will record identity Okay, and if the fraud has not occurred, and identity. Next, if uh, there is no fraud, then it goes to um, organization who will deal with uh, recording information. Okay, recording team, and then no identity will be recorded. There would be no identical information, no identity would be recorded for an individual. So we have a record team. And then I will have next block, I will have, it's anonymous. anonymous block and once anonymous is there the necessary action can be taken for this actions and the action blocks remain same for both the concert department will take action if this hoax hoax information being shared when being anonymous and the concern department can be uh, taken if the, the, they say that okay it, it's a true and a genuine um hoax call or tip off and for this the worst the, the thing which we can do is this fraud detection block which we can build it on using ai and how we can do and build using ai is that i will share it again so the block which has to be built up by you is fraud detection block actually and fraud detection especially on tip offs identifying tip offs on calls on text on emails or something which are genuine and genuinely tip offs so it's a fraud detection thing which we have to uh, think about fraud detection in terms of sharing and information so the fraud detection block can be ai based and uh, i will share some of the uh, some of the things on with you how to do it Combine different different techniques where you can combine telecommunication fraud technique. You have to combine uh, real time call fraud detection using machine learning techniques. You can look for. You can uh, phone scams. You can also uh, uh, look into identifying frauds using content using text because you will have an anonymous text information also coming coming on and uh, fraud in emails fraud in text fraud in social media contents everywhere you will have to build up a fraud detection technique and once you build up a fraud detection technique whether it's a scam whether it's not scam ultimately you will have to combine all of them together and obviously how you do it uh, 
with that fraud detection block which i have shared in with you is there's a lot of things to do and explore in that area so use ml use ai use a uh, lot of other uh, stuff where you can identify theft where you can identify uh, personal data where you can and also make it anonymous by actually creating uh, features so with this there's one more technique which you can actually prevent or uh, which you can actually uh, anonymize the data and you can anonymize by storing the features of the uh, person who has uh, shared the information because those features would be machine generated those features would be um, ml generated ai generated and you can use gans to map the identity with some other identity just to be reachable it it would be anonymous to the outside world but it will not be anonymous at all it can be reachable if there's any fraudulent activity being converted so what you do you save the features ai features of people who have conducted fraud and and so that they are reachable and for people who are actually giving you a true or a genuine information then you can um, not save their information so, uh, so that's how you can do some the, the play around thing here is about um the fraud detection and there are different tools which you can use for this and this, those different tools will depend upon what kind of a fraud uh, are you detecting and in tip offs the fraud detection would be for calls uh, for texts for emails and uh, for uh, uh, letters for a uh, lot, lot of tip uh, scans a uh, lot of scams which occur and you will have to combine a lot of different techniques so call recognition frauds you will have to combine you have to combine text fraud detection you will have to combine online survey scam fraud detection and spot the people who are potential scammers and uh, you will have to uh, discover actually discover fraud and automate it to the call center conversation so you, the automatic fraud detection and call center conversation you will have to do where you will have to uh, use uh, first as i said we have transcribed the information which is provided to us in a way and then carry forward ahead we have to avoid a uh, lot of things like this time we may not always be dependent on technology that is why we have an additional human layer in between but if we have um, for example if we have uh, if our, if we have data to train our fraud detection model then with time and time and time, the model gets matured and ultimately your information which you will have is So I could hear my voice uh, back, there was some, some network gap and uh, we will have, the, so uh, basically, I can show you another diagram for identifying telecommunication frauds. And uh, when you identify a telecommunication fraud, that's where uh, you can uh, you can use that technique. So I'll just show you how to identify a telecommunication fraud and how to switch. Okay, you will have to switch if there's a hacker or if it is not a hacker. Okay.
so the information which I'm sharing it with you right now is a block diagram for call fraud detection, which can be used, right, for alerting the user, for alerting the fraud detection. And once it is alerted, we can switch whether it's a normal call, it's a fraudulent call, it's actually a genuine tip off or not a genuine tip off. And that's we can, where we can use speech recognition techniques, AI techniques for calls. Likewise, you'll have to combine other techniques as well. So I'm just going to show you about call. And here's a diagram which you can see here on the screen, which is actually identifying. What you do is first you will listen. You will listen to the voice. And when the call is connected, you will start recording the voice. Once the voice is recorded, you will transfer the audio files to detect your speech, recognize your speech. And once your speech is recognized, you have a module, I mean, have an AI module where you will have to uh, build up an AI module of your, your call and you will have to transfer your speech to text. Obviously, because we cannot directly put it on uh, audio, so you'll have to transfer your audio to text. So this text module. So what you can do is once you have a text uh, fraud detection for a uh, hooks, a call and a genuine tip off model, and uh, then you can uh, detect based on the rules you have established based on the rules already we have with the text of information which individual has shared and you can do analysis. Okay. If you have an NLP, if you have text, all of the things you can do you can identify you can identify the sentiments of an individual if a genuine tip off is being given with the voice you can identify the genuineness and you can identify the fakeness and this is done by analyzing the data with its sentiments so the sentiment analysis module also you can add over it and then you can identify frauds based on whether the voice which is shared is Fox or the genuine tip off. And when, when, when a model detects that it's normal call, it's a genuine tip off, it, it flows through the system in a different organization. And if a model detects that, no, this is this model, it's a fraudulent call, we alert, we alert the user, we alert the, in, um, the organization that it, it, it may be a hoax call, it may be a hoax call, look into this matter in that way. There are two, we can have two ways where we can uh, do this and identify the gen, genuine tip offs and uh, um, tip offs which are being hooks to the, uh, to the department which we are targeting for. This is one of the techniques which you can use uh, when you have voice uh, fraud detection. The tricky part, the tricky part here would be part, the tricky part here would be to identify, uh, to understand that uh, how can we um, detect the fraud because we will need labeled data set for detecting the fraud. And if we have the labeled data set, then um, only then we can uh, get this kind of um, fraud detection module to work faster. So for the label data set, you can, uh, you can uh, talk about the, uh, you can find uh, already existing fraud detection modules uh, or data set, which it's there. And uh, any, uh, any which ways the, it has to be done for text. So you can identify the text for genuine tip off and uh, which are anonymous tip offs. The same module can be used for your audio as well. The only thing you have to do is text to speech convert or speech to text converter. You have to convert your speech to text, and that text you will have to import it to the model. And then um, 
generate so all of the uh, and then uh, detect whether it's fraud or not all of the, you so sentiment analysis module yes you can use it um hate speech yes you can use it you can combine different techniques in this you can combine them together and since you you, you can understand now how this competition is moving around what all modules are there which are some modules to you can be combined together for a different competition as well different different problem statement as well so you you, you can think about what uh, where uh, out of the existing modules what all modules can you combine together and whatever idea you can have for analyzing sentiments analyzing hate speech content analyzing a lot of things can be used over here as well because uh, more or less what are we doing is we are trying to identify the anomalies we are trying to identify the abnormalities everywhere and even here we are trying to identify the abnormalities and based on this abnormality we are ultimately uh, building up a system because this would be a system and i'm just explaining a part of a system which will help us to identify the genuine tip offs and the uh, fake tip offs which are fox points uh, the same thing you can do it for uh, for the written content as well. For the written content, you will have to do OCR. So there are OCR techniques. So OCR techniques can be done for your written content. And once the OCR techniques is done, so, so you can understand the modules that you can use. OCR techniques you can use. And once from OCR, you can convert it into text. And this text can be further taken into analyzation. That's when you have a written, uh, written context. And uh, when you have emails, you already have a text with you. So uh, with also with uh, social media, you will have a text with you. So or everywhere, wherever um, you are, ultimately you are converting it into a text and analyzing it. So every module which is analyzing text here, speech here in this um, in this uh, month, you can utilize them here as well. So ideas, you can combine your ideas, whatever. Even if you are not submitting, if you're submitting one idea, two ideas, whatever ideas you're submitting. Think about what all modules you have submitted, you have used there, which is unique idea to do. You can utilize the same idea here as well and combine. That is the reason it is the last topic and last topic is combining all of them together. And uh, uh, when all of them are combined together, you will have a strong, robust system which will cater to a lot of uh, different areas uh, which um, we have to just think about this. And uh, and another thing is uh, uh, by making things anonymous, we are, um, I mean, you can use AI module as well for anonymizing things as well. Think about how good it would be if you are storing an information, but that information is not readable, only detectable by a system. If you're storing an information, but that's only detectable by system, only system can let you know about whether uh, how to reach to that no only system if system wants it will let you know how to reach to that i mean who the individual is and that too if you compare then we compare and tell you that the two calls were from the same individual think of the modules which you can keep adding uh, to this as well and uh, create a robust solution for a lot of the techniques which uh, which is in, which is there I would come up to the conclusion and uh, there are 15,000 anonymous messages which are sent every day which show that the significant need it has from its users. So 15, the, every day if you check, there are 15,000 anonymous messages being sent and it really is one thing, I mean, it it, it, it uses, it's uh, it, there are a lot of uses for being anonymous. Uh, for its anonymity and freedom of expression. If there, we have need freedom of expression, anonymity must be allowed. And how we can improve it, we've already seen. We have the right and advantage. We, obviously, as I said, that every system has its pros and cons. And that's where we are trying to improve the cons of the system. And with the cons, we can you can you can think about a lot of fraud detection techniques where this this problem statement fits in. Again, you might not have the relevant data set available, but you can create your dummy data set and try to do that along with 
group of individuals you have, you can generate your data. That's what the research is all about. When you have a research thing, the data collection is the very, very, very first step when you know you're doing any kind of research. Survey analysis is the first thing which you have to do. So even here, you will have to collect the data on your own and try to come up with techniques which can help in prevention of scams and prevention of fraudsters from being from uh, giving us non-genuine tip-offs. Tip-offs is the hint of any uh, any illegal activity being carried out. So um, that's it for this session. And if you have any doubts, you can uh, let me know. Uh, and when or if you if you need any help in how a data can be collected, you can let me know. You can submit your ideas, your views, your thoughts on this. If you have any questions, post it and I'll be happy to answer all those questions to you. Thank you and all the best. Thank you, ma'am. It was a wonderful session. We'll be looking forward to the students for their ideas.